What's up everyone? So here with me today, I have the $650 gaming PC build for the month of June, like I promised you guys in my previous video. Now, if you haven't watched that video, all of my budget builds for the month of June, then I definitely recommend go checking that out because I explain all of the wonderful parts that I have here today and why I'm using them for this budget. Now, if you watched that video before coming here, then you would know that some of these parts that I have here are a little bit different than the ones that I have listed in that video. Now, the differences are purely aesthetic. It's just going to look different but it's not going to perform differently you are going to get about the same performance i have with this build if you follow the build guide that i have on that video pretty much part for part now the biggest differences between the video is going to probably be the video card here with me i have the galax gt 1060 6 gigabyte version and in that video i said that you can use either the rx 580 or the gtx 1060 like the one that i have here now i'm using the 1060 because this one was actually given to me for a review sample so there's no point in buying another video card when i have one that will work just as well and it fits the criteria that i listed in the previous video so to go over the basics i am going to be using the r5 1400 right here and i'm going to be overclocking it with the wraith cooler i went over that in the previous build video that i had for june 2017 and it's going to be paired with the asus b350 plus and now this motherboard is a little bit different than the one that i had in the video i believe the one that i had in the video was the asrock b 350 m hdv something of that sort but this one was given to me by amd as a review sample so like i said with the 1060 there's no point in buying another motherboard when this one will work just as well for the ram i actually have this gale or geo jail i never really understood how to pronounce it but it's uh 16 gigabytes 2 by 8 kit of ddr4 memory and i believe it's clocked at it's clocked at 3200 out of the box. Right now, DDR4 memory is sky high. So get what you can afford. I'm only going to be using eight gigabytes of this because that build that I have in that video is only using eight gigabytes. So I'm gonna be using one of the sticks. Cool thing about this is that it does have RGB LEDs there. So I'm gonna be installing those to make this look cool and flashy so second to last we have the power supply now this power supply is different than the one that i have in the video the one that i have in the video is either semi-modular if you're going for the corsair one or fully modular if you're going for the seasonic one this one is neither of those so <laughs> cable management is not going to be very fun so i'm going to try to do the best that i can it is the antec 620 eco so it's a solid power supply it's a little bit older I've actually had this for a while, but this is the only one that I really had right now. And like with the motherboard and with the 1060, why purchase something when you have something that can work just as well? So it's not gonna change performance at all and it's reliable, so might as well use it. Lastly, we have this case. It is the Bitphoenix Neos, I believe, N-E-O-S. Uh, it looks like a very stylish case. I've had it for a while, but I haven't had time to actually review it or do a build log with it but this is the time to do it. It's all white with the blue mesh, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm actually very excited to use it. Um, big shout out to BitPhoenix for sending this over because I probably would not have had a case to use or I would have had to go out and buy one if I didn't have this. So that is it for all of the parts and going over all of the parts. I'm going to put this all together and try to use this non-modular power supply to wire around all the cables and make it look good. So I'll be back in a little bit and yeah let's see how this thing looks and let's see how it performs all right guys so this is me putting together all of my components and while it's not a tutorial it does give a glimpse on how i actually put my computers together so at this point i've installed the cpu and i just installed the cpu cooler and now i am installing the memory and i like to do this all outside of the case because once you put this inside of the case you are restricted on what you can install and how you can install it so right here, I'm installing the RGB pins, and most sticks of DDR4 memory will not have these RGB pins on there. It's just these ones do. So you won't have to worry about this most of the time. So after making sure the motherboard is ready to go, I get the case ready, I install the IO shield, and then I route all of the case cables um, properly. After that, I install the power supply, and then I route all of those cables properly. And the reason why I do this is because once you install the motherboard, you are again restricted on space. So it's better to route all of your cables early on and get all of your cables in the right place so that when you do install your motherboard, you pretty much just plug and chug and you're good to go. 
So next up, we install the motherboard and that is as straightforward as can be. You basically place it and line up the standoff screws and then you screw everything in and you're good to go. So directly after installing the motherboard, I install the front panel case connectors. And this is probably the most annoying part of installing a PC, especially if it's your first time because you have to look up where each of the front panel connectors go. I really think that there should be some kind of industry standard instead of what we have now, which is basically you install six different pins to six different locations. But anyway, I digress. Here I am actually routing the cable for the video card that I am currently installing. It was pretty easy. You routed the cable, you install the video card, and then you plug it in, and then you're good to go. So remember when I said that installing the front panel connectors was the most annoying part? Well, I kind of lied. The most annoying part is definitely cable management, and that's mostly due to this power supply. It's not modular or semi-modular, so I have to use all of the wires that it comes with, and it comes with a lot of wires. And that is why I also struggle with closing the back of this case, because I basically stuffed all of the wires in the back of the case, and well, I never really got it on properly, but you know, it works for this video. So yeah, this is the final build, but let's see what happens when we turn it on. Peep the beige power cord, by the way. But when we turn it on, boom, RGB goodness. You might notice that I have two eight gigabyte sticks installed right now, and I wanna tell you that that's purely for aesthetic reasons. When I was benchmarking, I only used one eight gigabyte stick because that reflects the PC part picker list that I used for June 2017. But without any further ado, let's see how this $650 RGB gaming PC performs. So for $650, you get yourself a gaming computer that can play older AAA titles, newer AAA titles, and eSport titles without breaking the bank. Now, if you're interested in purchasing these parts, or if you just want more information on these parts and why I chose them, then check out my June 2017 build log video, and I will have the PC part picker links down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like, and if you loved it, subscribe because I have more videos like this coming out in the near future. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.